This Fiscast is about thermodynamic processes. Pause the video and read through the question carefully. As you now know, this question is asking us about how much work is done by gas which is expanding. We're told that the gas is that of oxygen and we have one mole of this oxygen and it expands at a constant temperature. That tells us what kind of thermodynamic process it is. Constant temperature means it's an isothermal process. We're given some additional information. We're told the temperature is 310 Kelvin, it stays 310 Kelvin because it's constant, and we're told the initial volume is 12 litres and the final volume is 19 litres. Because we're dealing with an isothermal process, it's good to remind ourselves what that process looks like on a pressure versus volume diagram. So because we can treat our mole of oxygen as an ideal gas, then if we know the pressure and the volume, that will uniquely indicate a place on this PV chart. So let's pick this point here to be at the initial volume and also the initial pressure. Because it's an ideal gas, that initial pressure times initial volume must be equal to N times R times T, which is my ideal gas law. We're told that during the expansion the volume increases, so whereas this is the initial volume down here, so for the volume to increase we must end up somewhere along this line. Importantly, because the number of moles and the temperature is constant, this right hand side of this equation is a constant as well. So we can ask ourselves if the volume is to increase, what must the pressure do in order to make PV equal to a constant? So if the volume increases, hopefully you realize that pressure must decrease, so the final pressure is down here. In fact, I can rearrange this equation to say that the pressure is equal to a constant divided by the volume. So this constant here is just N times R times T. And therefore I can draw a line, an isotherm, with a line of constant temperature which joins these two points by realizing that the pressure has a dependence which is like a constant over volume. So this is actually going to be a curve, not a straight line, which looks like sort of one over X. This is my isotherm. All the points along this line are points of different pressure and different volume, but importantly, they're a line of constant temperature. So this is my isotherm. The other thing to remind myself, we're looking to find the work. Well, the work which is done on my gas, as we defined from our first law of thermodynamics, is given by the negative of the area underneath my curve, underneath my pressure versus volume curve. So this area underneath here is the negative of the work which is done on the gas. That comes about from my first law of thermodynamics when I define the change in the internal energy delta U is equal to the heat that I add to the gas plus the work which is done on the gas. So I can change the internal energy, I can raise the internal energy, make it larger by adding heat if Q is positive, or I can do work on the gas. So let's remind myself that's work done on the gas. Now in this situation, an isothermal situation, the temperature is constant, so actually the internal, the, the internal energy will not change. So delta U is actually going to be equal to zero in the first law of thermodynamics. To we'll ask ourselves, what we wanted to find was the work which is done by the gas. Now that's not the same as the work which is done on the gas, however, they are related by Newton's third law, action-reaction pair, and we can see that, or hopefully you can recall, that the work which is done um, by the gas is the same as the negative of the work which is done on the gas. This means that the work done by the gas is actually given just by the area under the pressure um, versus volume curve. So it's a positive quantity here. Right. Let's start off by just reminding ourselves how we can uh, evaluate that. 
I can substitute for the pressure here in terms of the ideal gas law. It's going to be equal to N times R times T, which are all constants, so I can take them outside of the integral, divided by the volume. Okay, so PV is equal to NRT, so P is equal to NRT divided by V. I have to keep the 1 over V inside the integral, because I'm integrating with respect to that variable, between some initial volume and some final volume. So hopefully you recognize that the integral of uh, 1 over V is going to be given by the log um, of the volume, and I need to evaluate that at the final volume minus the log of the initial volume. This is sometimes written as N times R times T times the log of V final divided by V initial, just using my log rules to simplify that. In fact, this is an equation that's given in your formula sheet, and hopefully you could recognize that that's the equation that I can only use for isothermal processes. So I think I've gotten exactly what I want, uh, an expression for the work done by my gas. I know that I've got one mole of oxygen, so little n is 1. 8.31 is my universal gas constant. The temperature I've got is 310 Kelvin. And then we've got the log of V final over V initial. Now, normally when we use the ideal gas law, we say that the volume must be given in terms of meters cubed, SI units. However, because I've got a ratio of volumes here and the units the same, I can just say that my final volume, which is 19 litres divided by 12 litres, they have the same units, so the units cancel. It's just a uh, ratio, a unitless ratio inside that log function. Now, if I go through and work that out, I end up with 2,576.1 multiplied by the log of 19 divided by 12. So that's the log of 1.583 recurring and that gives me 1180 joules of energy that's the work which is done by the gas let's quickly just go through and assess this thinking back to the situation where i have uh, my cylinder which is a useful and, and piston which is useful to think about the uh, thermodynamic processes of my gas inside my piston Let's think about the work which is done by the gas. The gas pushes on the piston. Okay, it pushes due to the pressure acting on the on the piston, and we say that the initial volume VI is going to be increased to some final volume. So if I just rub out that piston, that piston moves. Okay, it goes up. We now have the final volume. And so if I think about work, work is force times displacement. The force that the gas exerts was certainly upwards on the piston. The, the direction that the piston moved was certainly upwards as well. So the displacement was in the same direction as the force. Therefore, I expect my work to be positive, and it is. Uh, so that checks out. 